The streets and roads of Mariupol are fraught with danger. Here, at this intersection, a sniper's bullets whizzed by meters from us. And then again. This is the eastern side of Mariupol city, the site of vicious battles just days ago. These are Chechen fighters, their commander Talib has let us go closer to the front lines, barely 500 or so meters. That way, west of us are Ukrainian military positions, but of course, predominantly nationalist battalions such as Azov. The fighting here was, was absolutely ferocious, as you can perhaps tell. A tank round yesterday impacted that building over there. But again, everywhere here are bodies of Ukrainian fighters, nationalists, who, which haven't been yet removed. Devastated neighborhoods, shops, apartment buildings, offices and houses stretch for miles. No structure here was spared in the fighting. In the midst of the rubble are countless bodies of Ukrainian nationalists surrounded by bullet casings and shrapnel. This is unfortunately it. This is as far as, as we go. This is right on the edge of the front line. Behind this wall, everything's covered by Ukrainian snipers from Azov Steel, the factory that spans a huge area of the city. That is where Ukrainian forces and snipers are still concentrated. We have had enough of snipers for the day. So basically just, just the edge of this building is it. In the other direction, which Chechen fighters have been kind enough, kind enough to escort us to. This building, for example, liberated just yesterday, there was a lot of people, many people, pensioners, women, children, hiding in the basement, in the basement. Unfortunately, access to the building, to the basement, is on the other side of this building. That ruined structure in the distance is the last of what is controlled by Russian forces, by Chechen fighters here. Unfortunately, the road between this building and that building is also covered by Ukrainian snipers. A fighter, a Russian fighter earlier today was killed while attempting to cross. They still haven't been able to get the body out. The fighters here know what urban combat is. Few things in our world are worse than this. We're moving ahead without losses. We're working very efficiently. The civilians that we liberate, they kiss us, they rejoice, they say thank you. There are elderly men, women. We evacuate people every day and give them food. And in this hell, barely a minute's walk away from the front lines, a haggard couple sift through the wreckage. We're in a bad state. We've been living in the basement since March 10th. Sometimes we stick our heads out. Our building was on fire. It took a day to put out the blaze on the first floor. Everything was destroyed. For us, it was time to go, which meant running the gauntlet in reverse. Here we are again. This, this road, just before this building, is also covered by a Ukrainian sniper who has now twice, twice shot at us. Both times missing. We've got to wait, see how Suleiman fares, and then follow him. The battle here will rage hottest and likely end at the massive Azov Iron and Steelworks complex, which is the economic heart of the city. But that's a battle for another day. Morad Gazdiev, RT, from Mariupol, Donetsk.